Good evening, everybody. Sorry, actually, it's, this is uh, quite late in the day, but uh, um, I hope to cover this in a, as short time as possible. Um, so you have heard a lot of presentations about you know, how different people have tried to implement uh, posits. And so we actually set ourselves a very lofty goal that this should actually replace uh, IEEE 754 over a period of time. So which means you, know, you should have some CPU, which actually is an FPU-enabled CPU. and we should be able to pull out the FPU and then stick in a uh, posit numeric unit. That is, that is the uh, starting point for us. And because of that, the way we actually wanted to do this was, today you have a lot of programs which are, which are running on you know, CC programs. And if we take that and if we, we can provide some mechanism to actually go through uh, uh, posit for, uh, for underlying calculations, but provide a mechanism in such a way that the existing C program can actually directly feed the operands what is required, say, in the, in the, whether it's a double precision or a single precision, take that through a conversion, convert that to a posit, and then posit numeric unit does the computation. And then the posit numeric unit's output, which is a 32-bit uh, posit, gets converted back to a double precision and feeds it back to the program. So with this, uh, we will actually have a lot of uh, C programs which are opening up, uh, but you know, it's running with a, a posit as the underlying computing, computing element. So uh, that was the starting point. And so uh, we also thought that it would be nice to have a uh, posit comparing with the performance of a double precision float or a single precision float. So we set ourselves with a goal of actually identifying a, a platform. And so we, we got a platform which is actually an Intel uh, ARIA 10 based SOC FPGA. So there, you heard a lot about the FPGAs, but SOC FPGAs come with a native processor and uh, surrounding, surrounded by FPGA uh, pool of gates. So we picked up an ARIA 10 SOC FPGA. And then so uh, it, it actually contains an ARM CPU and a native ARM F FPU. Uh, so al along with that, the uh, FPGA gates that are out available outside, we, we actually built a mechanism whereby we can actually trap library calls. And then we can have a drive driver for our library, which will take the operands coming from the program feed it to the, uh, the uh, PNU hardware, positive numeric unit hardware, and then bring back the results. That's how we actually were planned. And um, so unfortunately, the slide show is automatically running. Yeah. But uh, so we, the, we started off with uh, the 32-bit posit uh, development. And so that's what is this, as, as it indicates. But the thing is, you know, with this, we really need a compiler which is capable of generating posit operands and then posit, you should be able to define posit variables and things like that. That's a lot of requirement to start off with when you're, you cannot, you don't want to actually have to multiple things which are unknown. So we are, on one side, we are doing a hardware, and on the other side, we have the software. So we thought, we'll take a standard software, we'll take standard C programs, and then provide a mechanism such that we will be able to use the posit numeric unit for testing it. So, uh, and the advantage with uh, something like this is, um, you know, as I said, you know, you, we should be able to take whether it's an ARM CPU or whether it's an X86 CPU, we should be able to take out the FPU and then stick in our uh, positive numeric unit with a wrapper. So the, the, the way it is designed today is you know, you j it's a directly programmed uh, operands. So whatever operands that need to be operated upon we gets fed to the positive numeric unit and um, the operations are done. So uh, we are providing a mechanism from this uh, CPU side, trapping the library calls and then taking it through our own library, getting the execution done by the hardware. So that's, uh, that's a high level, that's what it is. And uh, so the, the, the way we really want to go with this is today we have uh, basic operations, plus minus multiply, and then you know, acquire operators, uh, which are quite close to that. And so what we want to do is uh, build more uh, in terms of uh, the other functionality like square root and you know, river, you know, uh, divide and then you know, reciprocals and things like that. So we, we have the hardware capable of doing it already. So we hope that with what we're doing now, we should actually target for uh, ARM CPU, for example, taping out with a PNU. And then we, we, so the beauty of this is going to be, you know, it's going to be you know, enabling a lot of compute, whether it's a mobile CPU or whether it's a desktop or a laptop or a server or you know, a supercomputer. Anything actually can be uh, posit enabled because of the going the CPU way. So that's, that's what we really are looking at. Right. So uh, here is Vijay, the, the yeah. guy who actually implemented the hardware. So mm -hmm. if there are any specific questions, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll let him do the talk. Right. Questions? Here's one. Do you plan to tackle this enormous issue of trapping every individual yes. talking point operation? Yeah. 
trapping it, going to your library, moving the date, all the to the SPGA, waiting for it, synchronizing, going back, and then I have to pack it. It's a good question. So uh, as of today, it's a functionality that we are building it. We are not really bothered about the performance. Yeah. Performance is the next step. So when we really get to a VLSI implementation, all these things will be automatically absorbed. And as I said, the way we are doing today is we are feeding operands like an IO mapped uh, operand writing and then collecting the results back. So that's a lot of performance penalty because you have to go out onto DDR uh, memory bus and then bring back the you know, data and things like that. Yeah. So um, we, instead of that, we will actually have a CPU tightly integrated to this, what we have built now. We, you, we will rip apart FPU and then put in uh, the PNU. So or maybe you know there may be an ARM CPU version which doesn't have a FPU at all. We will try to provide hooks for that so that CPU and then the PNU will, will, will work together very closely on an incoming instru instruction stream. You're seeing a lot of you're seeing a lot of compromises, and I drove some of them because I wanted a, a, a side by side platform with floats and posits having the equal level of technology, and that meant doing some things not the way a good architect would have done them, but that allowed us to get that complete equality of, of operation and it's just the first cut the very next version of their machine will be like like it should be this yeah so on the uh, on this side so we are going to implement the compiler for this one so I, I, as I shown you in the demo there so we are intercepting the instructions FP instructions so the demo what we have there is an arm instruction set so uh, what we are doing to the uh, next step is you know we are changing to those uh, FP routines. So on the compiler side, it's going to be, it's not so uh, hard work. So we just need to replace uh, on the assembly level mapping with those instructions, uh, FP instructions with the PNU. We, we, we might need to come up with a specific instruction format. So I think we need to discuss with uh, Professor John. So what kind of instructions he is uh, looking at. So w I'm more excited to uh, include the quiet instruction as well and uh, 512 bit and then 1024 or any higher bit. So in Caligo, we are coming up coming up with a new uh, a hardware or algorithm where the carry propagation won't take place uh, for a choir or any hi higher order. So the carry propagation time is the same as a uh, three or three, three or four bit carry propagation error. So we are working on that. So now we have a, um, a RTL uh, model ready for that one. Now we're going to have a, a uh, testing and simulation for you know higher higher order uh, accumulator. A lot of people are going through this uh, stages of development. They usually start with an add or a multiply and just try to get that working, and they get to adds and multiplies, and then maybe they say, "Let's try running this on some applications," <laughs> and maybe the next thing they try is the divide. But actually, the most important next thing to get is the choir. Because Newton Raston uh, iterations and other methods, if, if you have adds and multiplies and you have something that can accumulate with high precision, you can do square roots, you can do divides, you can do all the elementary functions. And I have coded up the basic elementary functions, the trig functions, e to the x, all of that, but it relies on the choir. So if you give me a multiplier, an adder, and a choir, I can get you everything else. But that's not true if you just give me a plus minus times divide. I need that choir. <laughs> all right. So uh, j just to add to, you know, there are, uh, we, we heard about OpenCL implementation. So the card that we have out there uh, as a part of the uh, single board computer that we have, the same card actually can be fit into a PCIe form factor. And then we will be able to leverage all the work that we have done here and enable uh, cloud enabled posit uh, with the next version of the hardware that you're actually thinking about. And you're thinking the next version is what you'd actually go to market with, right? Yes. Yeah. So they're not really selling that thing back there yet. <laughs> yeah, no, so if people are interested in trying out an existing C program, we really have the hardware ready, and we just need. Mm -hmm. So the, the hardware is really a proof of concept. So we not right. optimized it yet. So we're going to optimize it sooner or later. Yeah, and you get get a, get an experience uh, with what it takes to actually put st gates yeah. into an FPGA and what the Verilog looks like, and so on. Sure. Yep. Good experience. All right. Any thank, thank you again, guys. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah.